being able to create threads can help you add a new level of functionality to your projects. Threading can also help you build more complex or easy to use jigs. Best of all, threading isn't difficult to learn and the tools needed aren't that expensive. You can make creating a threaded hole much easier by drilling a straight, consistent hole. A properly set up drill press makes that job easy. Drilling the proper size hole for the tap being used is critical. The reference section of NewMetalWorker.com has several charts that give you the correct drill size for different taps. Like just about anything else, there's a few things you need to know to avoid getting yourself in trouble. On the far left is a plug style tap, and that's the most common and one you'll most likely be using. Next to it is a national pipe thread tap, and that's very common, but there's a couple of tricks to using them. And finally is a standard die, and we're going to look at using all of these. These dies are identical, except the one on the left has the bottom side facing up. You can see the cutting threads taper out to nothing on the left, and on the right is the full cutting threads at the top. This die set only has writing on the bottom surface, so when we install it into the holder, we want that bottom surface facing out. The plug style tap that we're going to be using has a tapered end that helps get you started in a hole. When deciding on the depth of the hole, it's important to remember that that taper means that you're not going to get threads all the way to the bottom of the hole. Most threaded holes are like this. That little extra space at the bottom of the hole is a good place for debris or scale to fall without interfering with the bolt. You can see here how the tapered part of the tap relates to that unthreaded portion of the hole. When used with the proper size hole, that taper on the tap helps you get it started straight. You really want to focus on keeping the tap straight to the hole the first few turns. When a tap actually starts cutting threads, it'll want to stay straight all on its own. A little bit of oil on the tap will help it cut cleanly and help it keep the chips free. When the tap starts cutting threads, you want to make sure that you go about a half to one full turn and then back it up a quarter to a half a turn to break the chips. Then you can turn the tap back in where it starts cutting threads again and go another half to full turn before repeating the process. I like this ratcheting tap handle from my KB tap and die set. That ratcheting action makes it easier to keep the tap straight because you don't have to go hand over hand. And once the tap's well established in a hole you can spin it easier like you would a regular handle. The directional lever for the ratchet makes it easy to back up to break up the chips and then flip it back into forward and run it back down where you're cutting threads again. After you've cut all the threads, remove the tap and clean up the flutes to get rid of all the chips that are in there. And then I'll add a little oil and run the tap over the threads a couple of times just to make sure they're all good and clean. Then we can screw the piece in at the holes designed for and see how we did. Using a die is very much the same. Make sure that you get it started square whether you're making new threads or cleaning up old threads like we're doing here. As we did with the tap, you want to make sure you back up every now and then to break up the chips. I also like to go back and run the die up and down the threads a couple of times just to make sure they're all clean. This is a national pipe thread tap and all the procedures are the same except that we stop threading with several of the threads above the hole. That's because this tap is tapered over its full length and that's there for a reason. When threading in a piece of pipe or a plug, you want it to stop before it passes through the hole. This helps seal it up. I usually stop tapping with six or eight threads showing and then try the plug. 